Hey friends, welcome back. It's Solids, and today we're going to talk about the factor of safety. This has been a big thing for students who are like, I don't get what factor of safety is easy, y'all. It's just how many times safe something is, okay? So for instance, you go out and you buy yourself a new half-ton pickup truck, right? And everybody's like, my truck is the strongest truck ever. Well, a half-ton pickup truck is supposed to, the, the load is supposed to be a half a ton, which is a thousand pounds. Well, my Dodge 4x4, Super Duty, Ram Charger, whatever, that'll hold 3,000 pounds. It'll carry it just fine, right? That's because the manufacturer has designed a factor of safety, kind of for idiots that overload stuff, right? Like, for instance, you have a swing set at an elementary playground, and then the college kids go over there, and they're like, let's put five of us on a swing, right? So... You can't design it for a little guy, a little kid that's a little elementary school kid because the college kids on the weekend come over there and tear it all down, right? So that's called a factor of safety. How many more times safe is it than it needs to be, right? So some things have a factor of safety. Other things have a very, or a big factor of safety. Some things have a very small factor of safety. So as an engineer, we like to have at least maybe a 1.5 to 2 factor of safety on nearly everything we build. But it really depends on what you build. Because what does adding a factor of safety do? If I make my pickup truck twice as strong as it needs to be for a half-ton truck, well, what have I done? Well, I probably had to increase the, the springs on it. I had to make uh, extra shocks. I had to make the frame extra strong, extra thick. And so what I've done is I've added cost in materials, I've added weight, so the thing is not as efficient as it used to be, um, so on and so forth, right? I have, now a swing set, it doesn't matter. It maybe it, maybe it costs you an extra 50 to bucks to make it three times as strong as it needs to be to hold up, you know, whatever the required load is. But let's talk about something like an airplane or maybe a spaceship, right? The rocket that's going to outer space that's holding the, the fuel as the rocket goes up, right? that may only have a safety factor of like 1.1, right? It is, or less maybe even. It is exactly, designed exactly what it needs to be to take the pressure, to take the fuel, and no more. Because raising that weight to orbit, right, costs a whole bunch of money and fuel and speed and uh, payload that I could be lifting, right? And so something like that, like an airplane, may only have like a 1.2 factor of safety because... It's so close to, well, it, it costs so much more and so much fuel and whatever to get it, you know, up to uh, speed, up to altitude. So they don't have a whole lot of factor of safety on those kind of things. So that's what factor of safety is, okay? So a typical factor of safety, they say find a factor of safety that's 1.5 on this thing. As a matter of fact, we're fixing to work this problem here. And they want a, uh, they want a, uh, um, factor of safety of 1.5. So we're going to solve that problem with 1.5 factor of safety. Um, the shelves at the hardware store, right? They say, don't put more than 800 pounds on them. Well, that probably has a factor of safety of like 1.5 maybe. So that would mean that it will, that shelf will really hold 50, or uh, let's say uh, 800 pounds would be, uh, what, half of that, 400 more, 1,200 pounds, right? So it really hold 1,200 pounds, but the sticker on it says, 800 pounds, but they know that some guy's going to be like, eh, I'll put more on there. Or I don't, I didn't really, or when I put it on there, I didn't really know how much it weighed and I accidentally overloaded it. Engineers like us, we have to account for those kind of things so that things don't get overloaded. So here's a little quick equation I put on the board for factor of safety. It is the allowable and typically the allowable is going to be the yield stress of a material. Okay. Now it'll either be given or you can go on the table and look it up and look up what sigma yield is. That's the point where something bends and when you take the load off of it, it doesn't spring back. It doesn't go back to normal. And we'll talk about that in the next chapter when we talk about material properties. So it's the allowable stress divided by the actual stress, okay? Or the allowable load divided by the actual load. And that tells you how many, what the factor of safety is, how many times more safe it is than it needs to be, okay? So that's what it is, that's what it means. Let's see if we can work a problem here. So find the minimum diameter at B and C here and there, okay, to the nearest one quarter of an inch, 
using a factor of safety of 1.5, and they give us the tau allowable, which is tau is what? That's shear stress. Allowable is 12 KSI. So step one, we gotta find out the force at pin B and pin C, okay? Now pin C, look here, we have a little exploded view of pin C. That looks like a double shear, right? Here's the tabs, and here's the bar that's attached to it in the middle there, right? So I've gotta shear that two times, that's a double shear. The pin at B up here looks like this. That's a single shear, okay? So this guy, single shear. And this guy, double shear. And we remember those equations from last time. They are right there. So let's go. Let's start off with statics problem. A little free body diagram action, huh? Okay. So your free body diagram looks like this. And what goes on that? All right, it, it gets the five kit load my red markers quitting on me it gets the three kip load I'll just put it on here like this uh, this is at a 60 degree angle and it also let's see what is this guy up here what's a B two force member pinned at both ends no force in the middle that's a two force member and so that guy is just going to be like this. I'm going to call that uh, F A B. He's totally fab, man. And then here at point C, that's a pin connection. Pin connection looks like this. A Y A X. Okay. Let's see. Do I know which way A X goes? Hmm. I don't really know because that one's to the left or the right. That one's to the left. I don't know. I'm going to put it on here like that. And if I'm wrong, it'll just be negative, right? Downhill, downhill, AY has to be uphill, okay? And again, I'm going to make this guy into two components, right? Every time I see a vector at an angle. So this over here is 5 sine 60. And this guy is here is 5 cosine 60 okay so here we go um, take the sum of the moments at point A that's what I think you should do let's see what you get you get 3 which rotates me negative minus 3 times oh how far away is that from A to there 3 inches and then minus this is I'm saying that this is acting on that point there okay it's in the middle that's the way I have it drawn over here. So this guy right here rotates me zoop, negative minus 5 sine of 60 times how far away? It's 5. Okay. And then I got FAB, which rotates me positive. So plus FAB times, ooh, what is that? That's 8 inches, isn't it? Okay. So let's solve that. Let's see what we get. We get 9 plus, ooh, 5, 25 times the sine of 60. Okay. 25 times the sine of 60. Well, that's 21.65. And all of that is divided by 8. And that's going to be FAB, which is plus 9 equals, divided by 8, equals 3.83 kips. So what is that we just found? That is the force in AB, and also that force on AB is the actual force that's applied to pin B. That's the thing that's pulling on pin B. So this is our pin B force okay and we're going to call that force v right we're going to call that force v okay 
Now what's left? We've got to find out what's going on in A. So let's do that. Some of the forces in the X. And in the X, I've got hey X. Now I just guessed this, so let's see if we're right or not. And remember, these, these forces here are acting on that point in the middle, right? They're in the middle of the beam. Um, so in the X direction, I have this guy, which is 5 cos 60. Let's see, cosine 60 is a half times 5. That's 2.5, isn't it? So plus 2.5, and then minus FAB, which we just found, so minus 3.83, okay? So that means that, oh, we got AX right, but AX is not very big, is it? AX is equal to 2.5, oh, clear, let's do that again. How about 3.83 minus 2.5, how about that? 1.33. Okay, so there's AX, and then we can get this last one, AY, by doing the sum of the force in the Y. And what do we have? We have AY going uphill, and then we got minus 3, and we've got minus 5 sine 60. 5 times the sine of 60 is 4.33. And both those are going downhill, 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 so they're negative. So a y is equal to 7.33 kips. So which one of those is the force on pin A? Well, it's uh, it's both of them, isn't it? Because they're going to give me some resultant force at A. And how do we find a resultant force? Well, we just take the uh, 7.33 and we square it, and we take the 1.33 and we square it, and then we take the square root of that, don't we? We know how to do that. That's 7.45. Okay, and so that is the resultant force on pin A. Okay, all right. Okay, so we've got our forces on pin, pin B and pin A. So let's see if we can find the diameter um, to the nearest quarter of an inch using a factor safety of 1.5 with towel allowable 12. So let's do the towel allowable. Okay, so the factor of safety is sigma allowable over sigma actual, which is, and it's also equal to tau allowable over tau actual. And what we're interested in, what we need to know is what is the actual tau that we need to use for this problem, okay? So let's do this. Factor of safety is 1.5, right? So that would be tau actual is equal to, right, I'll move this to the other side, move that over there, 12 KSI divided by 1.5. So the tau that we need to use in this problem is 12 divided by 1.5, which is 8, Okay, so that's the tau that we need to use to solve this problem. So we've got two, two things to do. We've got to solve it at pin A and pin B. We know V for pin B. We know V for pin A. Ooh, what is the area underneath there? What is that? Well, area is equal to pi r squared, or area is equal to pi over 4, D squared. So since they asked me to find the, the minimum diameter, I'm going to use that one with D in it for diameter, right? So here we go. Let's talk about pin. Well, I'll do the single shear first, which is pin B, okay? So pin B, let's do it. Uh, we're going to use single shear. So there's our single shear equation. So 8 is equal to V, which is, uh, what is V for pin B? 3.83. Uh, divided by um, that area, right? Oh, what's pi divided by 4? We could do that, couldn't we? Simplify that. Divided by 4. How about 0.785? Cool? Okay. So that's the area... Uh, underneath there, and then all we got to do is solve for D, right? This is this is a KSI, 
which the kips and the kips are going to cancel out and leave us with inches squared for that. So that's going to be good, right? So let's see. Let's multiply that over there. So 785 times 8 equals 6.28. So 6.28d squared equals 3.83. And so let's see. 3.8, whoops, 0.83 divided by the answer. Uh, equals 0 0.609 and then the square root of that. Point, so D is equal to 0 0.780. Now it said to the nearest quarter of an inch, didn't it? Okay, so the next next quarter, so a quarter of an inch, right? We, we you got uh, you got 0 0.250, you got 0 0.500, you got 0 0.750. And then the next one up, one. So from that, right, the, to the next quarter inch, D equals one inch, okay? That's, that's the diameter of pin, we'll put a B there for, for pin B, okay? So finally, let's do what we did for pin B, for pin, why did I call this pin A? Pin C, that's pin C. That's the top view, or the, the view of this double shear pin here. It's a double shear. So for this one, we're going to have to use the double shear equation. Okay, so we'll use the same towel. We'll use 8 KSI, so 8. And then on the other side, we'll use V, which we know what V is. V is 7.45 KSI. No, just KIPS, sorry. KIPS divided by two of the areas, right? Which is 0.785 D squared. All right, so pin C, the diameter of pin C needs to be what? Uh, eight times two times 0.785 equals divided by 7.45 equals, and then square root of that, which is D is equal to 1.298 inches, which we round to the nearest quarter will be, I have to go all the way up to an inch and a half, don't I? Okay. So there's my diameter of pin, uh, pin C, okay? So there you go. Double shear, single shear, factor of safety. It's not that hard, right? I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.